This video will be going over the composite texture along with the slate material editor and cropping and placement of textures inside 3DCO Max and why they're useful for you. So we are in 3DS Max 2011, 64-bit. And um, first off, to go to your material editor, you press M and you'll notice it looks very different from the previous material editor that was supplied in the previous version of 3DCO Max. If you do not like this uh, mode, you can always go back to an older version, Compact Material Editor right here. Um, I prefer using the Slate Material Editor because you can see how everything's connected and it's easier to work around it. For those who have used previous versions of the plugin called Node Joe, this is essentially Node Joe fully integrated into 3D Studio Max 2011. But due to the nature of how it works, it does get a bit slow, especially when dealing with complex textures and shaders mainly because um, each time you add something it rereads the entire track and goes back to see what's updated. Um, the problem is because it was originally just a plugin, they basically fully integrated the plugin into here. Um, the other thing that you'll notice is when dealing with Mental Ray, it slows down even more. So usually when I deal with Mental Ray, I just go back to the, uh, the Compact Material Editor and deal with it that way. Mainly because this mode for some reason through Studio Max for Mental Ray is very slow. So, let's start off. I'm going to show you an example of how you can use um, this little crop and placement technique. So, in another video I had gone over how to do it in Maya, and this video will be going over how to do, to do it in 3ds Max. I personally find it to be a lot easier to handle in 3ds Max than it is in Maya. Mainly because the feature is really built in and you don't have to do a strange workaround like uh, using the a layered texture and placing everything one by one. So I'm going to create a little plane here and I'm going to put that in the middle. I'm also going to apply a shader on here. So here we go. I'm going to use a standard drag and drop. I'm click on my material and with the material selected in here I'm going to assign the material to the selection. So make sure you have your material selected. Um, if any of you have ever used um, a UDK system, it's similar to it with how these little, little dots. But the difference is your shader actually is on this side and everything connects in. Instead of being on this side of your map and everything connects in that way. So I want to grab an image. So I'm going to grab a bitmap here and move and drag and drop right inside. And it'll ask me what texture I want. And I'm going to use my tiles texture that I created for my Maya tutorial. And here I have it right here. So I'm going to drag this little dot and plug into diffuse color. And if you want to view inside the viewport, make sure you click on this. And you'll see a um, little checker map that says view and viewport. If yours looks a lot more pixelated than mine, the reason would be because um, you have to set up your plugins properly. By that, I mean you want to go to Customize, Plugin Manager, uh, not the Plugin Manager, Customize, Preferences, and under Preferences you want to go under Viewport, Configure Driver, and under this right here you want to choose your resolution of everything. I want to change it to 1024, 512, and check match bitmap size as closely as possible. You can even turn on anti-alias lines for wireframe and how much you want to anti-alias it by. I'll just put uh, four samples for now. Make sure you do have a strong enough video card to handle all of this. Once you click Apply and OK, you'll have to close your Max and reopen it. OK, I've just closed 3ds Max and reopened it, and you'll notice that the huge change in quality and textures is much sharper now. Um, it is a bit different from Maya, whereas Maya, when you turn on hardware, uh, uh, high quality render, everything is always super sharp. In Max, you can you don't have to turn that on because uh, you're always working in direct 3D mode, unless you change it back to OpenGL, which I do not recommend unless you have a very old machine that does not have a dedicated video card. Now that I hope we have this, I'm gonna go back in here, and what is this crop and placement? Well, if I double click on my bitmap, it'll open my little attributes for it. If I click on crop and placement, I click View Image. It shows the image that I have. You can actually just tell it exactly where you're going to crop it. I can move this little uh, red outline and tell it I want to crop it this much. We know that'll be a 0.5 by 0.5. But the cool thing is, let's say you have a 
a bunch of smaller tiling textures you can use everywhere else. You can do the same exact thing. You can have unique textures with specific placements that have tile on it and tell it, I want to just use this little location right here. Once you have that, you click X and make sure you turn on Apply. Now we have the same effect we had in Maya. What's so great about this? We can do this in Maya already. The difference between Maya and Max is I can simply turn on tiling right now. I want to tile this texture 5x5. Five five. And notice how it always works in here. Uh, I can start rendering it right now, and it works, just like that. But what if I want to do the thing like I did in Maya, where I was able to place specific tile textures in different locations? Well, then that's when we come and deal with the uh, composite. So I'm going to bring in a composite now. I scroll down under Maps. There's something called Composite. And drag and drop this right here. And now I'm going to reconnect these, like so and bring another one into layer 1. In the composite, you notice I have this little section. The cool thing with the composite is it's a super robust uh, layered texture where I have all of the um, layer styles that I have inside uh, Photoshop. I'm going to click New Layer. You notice how my shader in here updates. Now I can accept another texture. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag another bitmap right here and load up the same texture image I had before which should be in this tile textures and I can plug this into layer 2. Now you see that update inside. What I want to do now is I want to choose a different location. Let's choose the same uh, rocky wall we did in Maya. Go in here, view image, where to go we see that it's a 0.5 over there, 0.5, and 0.5. We'll crop that exactly the way we need it to. Click Apply. And we're going to have this tile the same way. I'm going to do two, 2 instead. But I want to reveal the bottom part. Well, that's what we have this for. We have a little location for none. You can click on that and you can choose whichever one you want to use. Uh, so you got to think to yourself, which one would be best? Um, for this whole setup. You can scroll down and see which ones you have that can be used. One is using a um, gradient. If you use a gradient, you can probably just cut it off exactly at a certain point. Uh, another way is possibly being able to use checker. Let's try out checker. By default, it does something like this. If I go into my checker map itself, and maybe I want to reduce the tiling. Um, seems like by default it always tiles, so what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to change this map, like I said before, and we can always go back and try that. Oops, let's go back in here and change this to uh, gradient. Let's do a ramp. And I can simply go right here, click and create a new one, Bring that all the way over here. Click and create a new one. Bring that all the way in. And we can separate however you want. You can re-rotate this whichever way you want. There is always rotation on here. You can also do it visually to see what's actually doing to the whole texture. or just type in the value yourself. And there we have it, we can place it specifically where we want. This is considered a procedural style texturing which allows you to do you know, just overlay anything over itself. You can also have it so that uh, you can use any other type of uh, layer technique. So if I double click on this again, I can change this from normal to average, addition, multiply, and etc. You start getting very interesting um, blending techniques this way. But as always, you can always go inside, change it however you want, and um, you'll get some really interesting results this way. You can also hand paint your own and just simply import that in. Uh, there's nothing wrong with that.
that you now know how to place things uh, individually. Also inside Maya we had a little smiley face sticking right on top of everything. You can always do that too. You can go inside texture. Um, and I might just tell it to use a color correction which allows me to have just a solid color because currently there's nothing um, applied to it. Uh, there's color correction. Let's go in there. And this is pure black for now. I can load up my own alpha bitmap. Go inside. I had a smiley. Um, let's use a target this time because my target actually had an alpha. So smiley right, right there. And it's already loaded inside uh, 3ds Max, and you can see it all happen in real time. As always, you can go inside and place it yourself, and control exactly, um, you know, how it's looking. So if I turn off tiling for both of them, and I change my tiling now to 0.5 or 2, you can change the size. And we can always offset this exactly by how much you want, um, and move it around. So 0.2 negative point two negative point two you can move this anywhere you want I find this is a very uh, interesting way uh, to work with things uh, that'll be in this tutorial